Welcome to video 3 on how we can create automatic train traffic on any EEP model railway simulator layout using Lua code but without writing any code ourselves. All we have to do is to specify our layout in data tables. The challenge that we set ourselves in this example is that we are going to add a third track here on our railway station and it is going to be a two-way traffic track. In the previous video we had this layout with four blocks and two trains and all went well. Let's now set ourselves this challenge to add a third track at this railway station and to allow traffic in both directions. And if we want to translate this into blocks, then yeah, we have this simple solution for the two-way traffic. Since the Lua code expects only one signal per block, yeah, what we can simply do is uh, uh, tell it that there are two blocks over here. Block number two is for the traffic to the right and it has this signal here. And block number three is for the traffic to the left and it has this signal there. That's all there is to it, so let's configure this. Oh, by the way, in the meantime there had been someone asking why don't we have any blocks here in the curves, in the uh, tracks uh, between the uh, stations. Well, uh, there was no uh, specific reason. It's perfectly okay to have this block situation and all that it does is that it adds uh, more signals and yeah, that can be nice on your layout to have more signals, a uh, station entry signal. Uh, but what it also does, I am quite a lazy person, so this takes a lot more data to configure. And they are not needed uh, to have the perfect collision free uh, train traffic. That's why I left them out. But you can of course experiment and put them in. They obviously both need to be two way blocks. So I see now that I should have given them two numbers, which I forgot. In 3D view the layout now looks like this. We have added this third two-way traffic track with a signal on both sides. We now have six blocks which means we have six of these control panel LED signals that show us the occupied blocks. We still have two trains which means we have two trains on off switches and a main switch. And in 2D view it looks like this and we have to put this into the Lua configuration but yeah again it is quite impossible to read these signal numbers uh, so what I prepared again is this sheet where the numbers are clearly visible and well let's have a look in notepad plus plus how to configure this. We have two trains, the same two as in the previous video and the steam engine it has this on off switch number 14 and train number 2 the blue engine has the on off switch number 4. Then we have to specify the blocks and we are going to do that later when we are placing the trains. Let's go to the allowed blocks. Now let's first do this two-way block because that is the new situation over here. Blocks two and three are, so to speak, twin sisters or brothers, I don't know. Uh, if a train arrives in block three, then yeah, block three is going to be reserved by Lua. But in this case, we also have to reserve block number three because that's the twin sister block. There's no, no train allowed to drive into block three. And that is how we fill in this two-way block table. Uh, if a train enters block two over here, it says it also has to specify that block three is, uh, uh, we also specify that block three is reserved and vice versa. If a train enters block 3, Lua reads here that it also has to reserve block 2. 
Uh, I usually uh, make these numbers deliberately sequential, but yeah, it can happen that uh, you, you change your layout later and that the twin sister of block 2 is block 27. That can happen and that doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be sequential numbers. It's just easier when you do it this way because then they are also always next to each other. That's just a simple detail. Now that we have these uh, two-way blocks, uh, two and three, uh, defined, let's see where we allow trains. Well, our steam engine, train number one, I allow it in block one and in block two. Uh, that is the middle block from left to right. And then at the very top of the layout, it is block six. Then our train number two, that is allowed in block three. That is our two-way traffic block, but now from right to left. Then it is also allowed in block four and then at the top of the layout, a block five. That's it. I did not specify any waiting times, but of course we can still play with that later. Uh, then, as usual, we simply fill in the block signals for every block and then we do exactly the same for uh, our control panel signals. Just read out that signal. If the number is hard to read, right click it and it will show up. Alright, so far it was simple filling in, but now we have to be careful and specify which turnouts we need to switch for every route. Well, we have eight routes now, so it is becoming a little bit of uh, a job. Uh, we are not going to talk about each and every one of them, but let's just pick out one and see how this worked. Uh, we have a route from block two to block six. And let's have a careful look which turnouts we come across and how we have to switch them. The first one is turnout number two and we have to switch it on two which means branch. Then we come across turnout number 12 and we have to switch it to main or straight. And then we come across turnout number 17 and that also has to be switched on straight. This is how you can just yeah, follow the, the route from one block to another. It's always from, from, from one block away, so you always clearly see which turnouts are in between and how to switch them. The only thing here, it is not uh, difficult, it is not hard, uh, no thinking work is involved. It's just to be very careful and precise. If you make one little error, then the whole layout will not work and trains will collide. When we carefully filled in all these routes, then yeah, we still have to do the number of the main switch. In this case, it is three. And then, as always, we have to specify the state numbers of the signals that we have in use on this layout. That's it. Well, so far we have only had a look in all the three videos at this a configuration part but the code is a little bit longer of course but it says uh, over here there's no need to change anything below this line and there really isn't below this line there are uh, about 150 lines of code that do the work and that code is the same exactly 100% the same for each and every layout but we can have a short look now that we have a little bit more time the first part of that code is uh, doing a lot of initializations. Then uh, if we are placing trains, then the code below that if takes care of uh, saving the data of which train is in which block on disk, such that the next time that we start, we read out uh, from disk where the trains are. And that is done in this piece of code. And then the EEP main uh, loop starts. That is a loop, uh, Lua loop that runs five times per second. That is somehow uh, specified within EEP. And in that loop, we do the following. For each block, we check if a 
bulk can be released because the train has left it already and then we can set it free such that new trains can make use of this free bulk. Then we check for arrivals. If a train arrived in a block, then that is detected by that track sensor that had set the control panel signal on red. We can see that and then we can know that a new train is in this block. And the main thing that needs to happen now is set this flag that there is a train that now requests a new route because this train is going to stop here at the signal if we don't find a new route or it is really going to stop it if it had a waiting time, a stop time. If the stop time is over, yeah, then we can try to find new routes and we make a list of all the possible routes. And the possible route is a route of, uh, yeah, of allowed blocks for this train and those blocks also, also have to be free. We do this for each and every block, so for each and every train that arrived in the block. So this list of new possible routes can uh, contain, uh, yeah, in this case, only uh, two or three routes. But if you have many trains, there can even be 10 possible routes, but we can start only one. And that is done over here in the final part. Uh, randomly select one of the routes that is uh, an available route. And then we do all the actions needed. Uh, to start that route, which is of course switch the turnouts, set all the reservations of the new block and the turnouts, and then switch the signals and so forth and so forth. So the whole code is uh, yeah, just 150 lines, that is not even that much. Well, let's place some trains and drive. By the way, the Lua code and, and all the EAP examples 1 through 5 and the user manual, it's all available as one download package from GitHub and the link goes in the description. Here we have the layout in 3D and let's open the Lua screen and first do our initialization. So we have to place the trains. Yeah, they are already placed, but let's just assume they were not. What we then do is make this uh, place train is one. Then we place our trains and we just carefully look where are they. Train number one. Uh, yeah, indeed it is in block number six. So that is uh, okay. Uh, because this is block one. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 uh, and the uh, train blue is in block 1, 2, 3, 4 and block 4. So that's where the train is. Um, then I put a reload script, uh, I reload the script and then I put that uh, uh, Lua script back on place trains is zero and now I'm ready to drive. This needs to be done only once and from now on data will be saved on disk and the next time you if you stop and the next time you start EEP up all is okay you don't have to do this again this is only the very first time after we placed new trains. Well, let's uh, do some driving and we did not have any stop times. Uh, let's just switch that main switch on, pressing the shift and then left click. And let's also put both trains on and see uh, yeah, if they are going uh, where, where they are going. I mean, uh, if they are going on this two way track, uh, that is all random. Uh, we allowed them on those uh, on both tracks. Oh, we can see already here the number one steam is going to track number two, which means it is going to this middle track right now. Um, yeah, when the tail of the train is in this block entry uh, sensor, then the blue train knows I can go. Let's do that. And there it goes. In the meantime, because we did not have any stop time specified, the uh, steam train also goes ahead and they will meet each other here at the top. 
and I bet all will go fine. The steam engine had a speed of 30 and the diesel engine had a speed of 40, so it's a little bit quicker. We can see it is there a bit sooner, maybe it still has to brake a little bit, but uh, it doesn't even have to come to a full stop. And the steam engine doesn't have to stop at all, or not even have to brake. We can see over here the blue train is going to block 3, so that means now the blue train is going to that middle block. Yeah, that, uh, that can, that is allowed. Uh, uh, of course we can specify in the allowed blocks that for instance only the cargo train goes on that block. Uh, yeah, you can do anything you like, you can specify in those allowed lines let me let me open up the allowed lines then we know what we are talking about and these two lines over here we can put in waiting times oh i had done that i see 40 seconds and 20 seconds yeah no well let's see if that works uh, here we specify uh, if a train is allowed and if it has to wait uh, reload do I have to reload yeah why not so that means that steam engine does have a waiting time of 40 seconds so it, it should stay there for a while and that is of course because this is so to speak a railway station all we did not do right now yet is place a building there but indeed the steam engine is having a waiting time and yeah now it is too late the diesel already occupied this track so even if it has the waiting time over it still has to wait a little bit longer for the track to come free but i bet that as soon as the tail of this blue train is gone then the steam will go which should be approximately right now yeah there it goes well it seems to be working all right so let's do in the next video yet another challenge and that is to extend this uh, station over here which is an industry area uh, for fun we are going to build a couple of dead end tracks over there and see how we can handle dead end tracks in this automatic train traffic lua controlled and maybe see you back there in the meantime have fun